Hello everyone. Hey, we appreciate everybody going to view this great set of, of barrows and gilts that we have for our sale coming up Tuesday, March the 10th on showpig.com. So we encourage everybody to view these pigs. A uh, couple things of importance. All the purebred barrows qualify for the Indiana certified Indiana bread. We're a five year member, been in from the beginning. So all of these qualify for the certified Indiana bread, as I said. Uh, great set of pigs. Uh, we've got every breed except uh, Landry's, Spots, and Poland in this sale. So we want to just welcome everybody to view them, and uh, we appreciate you uh, having any questions. Feel free to email, text, or call. Thank you very much. Hey, everybody. As we're getting started, we are at pin one, checking out the Durock Gilts. All right, let's just start with the gilt here on the far left. 8-7. Okay, that is 8-7? 8-8. Sorry, that is lot 8. 8 is lot 8 is 8-8. Eight eight. Four front paradise. I think this gilt had, I mean, she. what I love about her is her massive skull width, but yet from there back, she's still plenty green in her body condition. She sets that hind leg in really great. For Durox, you know, it, it is never a problem when they have room to grow and that massive chest floor makes me think that, that she's just going to get thicker, wider, bolder. She's level in her hip, really good in her hind leg, just a super complete gilt. Um, I love her pedigree, you know, forefront was the sire of the 210,000 world record setting boar from Louisville last year. Paradise is a Duroc boar that we had here that just fundamentally gave us the best feet and legs. So kind of the stoutness. Not to mention she's tall shouldered and big legged, Lindsay. Absolutely. Here's the little 13 gill. All right, 13-3, lot 10, family tradition survivor. Remember, she's a little younger than the rest of these. Um, and I know she's a little smaller than those in the pen, but she is cocky. This girl, she is a heads up, full bladed, fresh back. She has great muscle expression and shape down her top. This is a girl who just needs to go home, have a little TLC, grow this one out. She'll be an absolute fun one to have this summer. An easy uh, one to try and get that head cranked up. She's lot 10. Okay, so let's go with the two dash uh, seven gilt right okay. here, Liz. Right here, two dash seven. She is lot seven. Redbone Southern Knight. I want to take a second and study her. She is for sure the alpha female of this pen. She demands attention. She demands, uh, she pushes the others out of the way. A, side note, great showmanship pig when they do that. But study that bone work. Study how tall shouldered she is, but yet big back. She is the one who can bind extra extension with mass and squareness. I love how she is. Here's her sister right here we go. Two dash five. Her sister is a uh, lot six. Remember that pedigree is red bone southern knight. Her sister is just a not shorter body as you can tell, but she packs in even more bone. Um, and, and again, that's what you get when you breed with red bone. These red bone females are foundation type sows. Big skull, big bladed, stout, massive girl. I think she comes in, she looks like a horse. You're gonna have a lot of fun with her. If we can find eight 10. Right here she comes. She is lot nine. This is again a forefront paradise. Just like the other gilt, this girl is green. She's a little younger, and she, you know, maybe she has been pushed out of the way by the others. But what a fancy gilt! I think this is one that she will look ten, you know, just keep getting better and better, and look better in your barn uh, as she masses up. But what a front end! Look how clean fronted she is. That long stride off of that front blade, really expressive and fancy. She's just a really cool, neat. Lindsay, this one's head, neck set, her ear set off to the side, her length of stride mm -hmm. is going to differentiate her from the rest of the crowd. Okay. Absolutely. There we go. Good job. Okay, everybody. We are now at pin two, checking out some Tamworth gilts. The one dad has on the pole is 1-9. Um, we're going to see some littermate brothers to her, but she is a fury back on um, Zephyr, and again, her mother was the reserve guilt uh, at the Team Purebred Junior Show. 
Her mother was also the champion overall at the Ohio State Fair, uh, littermate to Zoolander and Zohan. Uh, this is the guilt right here, guys. This is the one who has the front end, who's tall shouldered, who's attractive profiling, who literally has all the ESTs when it comes to look, balance, extension, and structural integrity. Her hock and hind leg is dead set perfect, and yet you study her over her blade and the width of her skull between her eyes. That one is a guilt that you need to look in and be serious about. We are really in. On 1-9, she is lot 20. I'm going to say that I'm way in on that one, Lindsay. Yep. Okay? Like, way in. Big time. Okay. Let's uh, jump to her, uh, Let's, here's here's her, her sister. sister. Right here. Her sister, if we can pull her out, is lot 19. She is 1-3. She does have uh, a cauliflower <coughs> ear out there. But take the cauliflower ear away. Let's study her. If we can potentially get a chest shot of this one. I'll see if I can get her to pull. She got a little spooked there. Get the, the door. door shut. That's fine. That one has a chest floor laid into her and then we'll get her going. And she is a notch more moderate compared to her sister. Obviously she is still athletic and great structurally. I think Amy, do you have a video, another video of her? This is probably yeah. why. I promise, come study this one. She is good. Don't let the ear detour you because from that blade back, that girl is unbelievable. Big skull, big rib, big back, still great hind leg. Exactly. So let's jump. Let's jump here to the seven litter. So, so I'm going to take a second and talk about the seven litter. Um, they are out of Zohan, which again is a litter mate to the mother of the one litter. And then, but the mother of the seven litter is our precious sweet potato. And sweet potato is basically the heart of our Tamworth herd uh, here. And you guys can read in the litter description uh, online everything sweet potato has done. You have seven dash who? Seven dash four. Seven dash four. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, guys. Um, study them. Study this one hard. Study this one hard. The Tamworth shows this year is going to be really tough. If you think you can take a good one and win, you're going to be mistaken this year. It's going to take something of that caliber. Okay, here we go. The next girl. That one is seven dash seven. She is, oh, dead level. Get that profile look of her, how just from that blade to her hip, and she has such a stout, expressive hip, but sets that hind leg down so square and genuine. She's already trained for dad, but her chest floor, if we can get in that chest floor, I'll the skull width. I'll bring it back, I will get it. This one is why he is doing that. This one is lot 23. 7-7. I don't think you're going to lack for power on this one at all, but you will not sacrifice look and design. Nope, don't let her ears scare you. Okay, this let's way go to 8-6. 7-6. 7-6. In my mind, 7-6 and 7-8 look very similar. Uh, and so you've got a few things, but holy power and mass and, and just shape. But yet she handles it so well at the ground. And, and she's just so clean through that front end. Very, it's very hard to make a jawline that clean and that chiseled, but yet from her blade back, be opened up in the top part of her blade, be opened up in that center rib. She's just genuinely a combination female. Reminds me a lot of her mother, Sweet Potato. And then if we jump to 7-8, I think 7-8 is darn near the same. She's honestly popped a little more power here in the, in the last couple days. And I think she is going to have some more, a little more muscle. But spunk. This guilt has the spunk. I mean, she has the head, the attitude, uh, you know, sometimes just that extra attitude in the ring gets you that cause of look. But that girl is a massive, massive tank, but yet will handle herself structurally very, very well. I'm going to say something on this with a word that I think you got to use. Brute out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, this... pull, you pull this one out of the show ring, you go right right and make the foundation female. So let me see if I can pull all these girls up here. So we have, yep, here's our Very offering. Sweet. The one litters again are Zohan, or excuse me, are Fury 
uh, back on their mother uh, was the uh, litter mate to Zohan and Zoolander. Let's go Santana. down the line. Santana. I was hunting her name. Uh, what? Lot number over here on, the, on your left would be 7-8. 7 So the speckled gilt is lot 24. Right the gilt next to her seven, six, is, seven. I think, very similar to her, lot 22. And then we have 1-9 is lot 20. And then the little gilt right here is lot 20, no. 7 four. 21. And then the crinkle ear gilt right here is lot 19. And then the one kind of spunky sitting down on is lot 23. Okay, everybody. We are now in pin number three, checking out the Hampshire gilts. Okay. Let's start off with 8-6. She's here to the very far left. She is lot two. World class, here I am. I, knowing this pedigree, I think this one's going to be a bad man in JAMA. I know that she is green today in her body condition. Doesn't scare me one, I, one bit. That mama sow line is known for being greener in their type. But we know that world class is going to come in and tank them apart. But you're going to keep that front end extension, that taller shoulder, that longer body, that excellent hip shape. She's one we can push to a big heavy weight and make look like a brood sow come June, July, even August. All right, here is 8-4. Eight eight this is her litter mate sister. This is the lead-off gilt on the sale. Again, that is a world-class here I am. I think just very similar to her sister. She's maybe a notch stouter scald, big back, stout hip. It, it, again, we like them when they're still green in that body condition because all she's going to do is tank out more and more as time goes on to all the right pieces in a genetic package that we know works. Okay, a very unique guilt that we have here next. This is lot five. This is 18-7. She is a one of a kind prime time. And this is a guilt unlike any other guilt we have in the sale. She's a notch moderate compared to those, but will we have to worry about mass, base width, center body, rib shape, getting this one to eat? I don't think so. She is just so stout, so pliable, so soft. That's a really unique, very different guilt compared to the rest we'll see here today. Okay, I want to take a second on 17-9. This is another one-of-a-kind primetime guilt, not litter mates um, to the, the chunkier guilt, and you'll see they're different in their type and kind. Her front end is just impeccable. She has that neck extension that ties into the top of her blade really high, and that's just so clean jowled with a monster chest floor laid underneath her, but then from her blade back begins to open up into a stout back, a stout out hip and just really wide and square from behind. I do believe this one has the look to get the job done. Okay. And that was lot four. And then we had 12-6. The stylish one. High expectations prime time. We saw high expectation put in the reserve Hampshire boar at Belton uh, just last week or two weeks ago here. Talk about feet and legs, extension, mobility, soundness of structure. You want to talk about ideal structure. This lot three gill absolutely has it. She is so attractive, so built right from the profile. And we talked about that head as well. Ties so good in the top side of her blade. And she will massing up, thicken up, but she already has all the pieces. I think she's one that you can run into Indy and she will be a brood sow, but yet fresh from it. Okay. So we'll go through here. Our Hampshire gilts are our, our lead-off gilts. So we are seeing lots one through five right here. If we go left to right, I have seven ooh, or eight four. Yep, I have uh, lot number one, and then we have right here lot number five, and then that one is lot number two, and uh, then the next gilt is lot number four. Uh, excuse me, lot number three is that high expectations guilt that's eaten dad's hand. And then the guilt in the corner, she is lot number four. Okay. Oh, we are now on pin four, checking out some crossbred guilt. 
Okay, we have a lot of power and quality in this pin, so we're going to try to move through them quickly, but yet give you time to look at each and every one of them. Um, you just want to start right there, Dad. I'm trying to get rid of the falls. So we'll start with these 13. 13. Yep, we got three 13 letter gilts in this pin. This one is 13 dash eight that pedigree is exchange rate reaching high we know that exchange rate has worked for us he's produced champions he's produced uh boars back into our stud and i think these hogs are no different in terms of that quality this dash eight gilt um is perhaps maybe the sleeper um in, in my mind of the sisters uh but yet she has shapely back she has that extension through that front end. Really unique, really nice, nice. This gilt is her sister, the seven gilt. Yeah. And the six gilt right okay, there. Okay, right there. I have both in. Let's talk about the six gilt first. Uh, because the six gilt, I She's think, the one against the wolf. Yes, I'm sorry. She's the one with the dot on, the, on her back there. Uh, I think in terms of just feet and legs, this one is so sound. I think she takes a long stride off of the wind. Her cock is set just ideally where it needs to be, but yet she has that genuine muscle shape down her top. I, I really like how this one ties together. And then the really cool marked one, look there right on the front side of her cannon bone on that back hind leg. I, I think that one will grab your attention as she comes out. That one is dash seven. I'm sorry, I'm not telling you lot look numbers. She's lot 33. Yeah, the chest floor. I want to just talk about a little this. bit more. Yeah, she's the little bit, she's the stouter one uh, of the litter mates in my mind. And I love how wide and genuine she is from hop to hop, but yet she's still fresh and clean. Um, we know the exchange rate and reach high, uh, which reach and high goes back to mile high. The that three line sisters works. Right here, ladies. Yep. So just so you know, dash. Um, 13 dash 6 is lot 32. In the middle. She, right there with the dot on her back. 13 dash 7 is the one with that dot there on her back hind leg. That's lot 33. And then 13 dash 8, the first gilt that we talked about that's maybe a little greener, she is lot 34. Okay, we'll jump over to the three letter gilt here, sis. Okay, 3 dash 9 is lot 27. This is a booty tickle battlefield. I just think this is good hog. I mean, I just think she puts so many positives together. And, and you know, you can only say the same words in so many different fashions, but she is a bull bladed, good, sh good muscle shape down her back, so square and genuine at her hop, but yet still attractive and fresh from the profile. I think her deep dark blue color matched with the fact that she is just a no holes complete type of a gilt. You will do a lot of good things with her because there's just not a big place uh, to necessarily pick this one um, apart. Okay, let's go Calico. Okay, Calico time. She is 11 9, lot 31. Okay, love this pedigree. This is a matchmaker Horton. And um, oh, I, think, I think this gilt, man, she just has the look. She has not only the color pattern to grab your attention, but she has that great center rib, that great center volume matched with a big hip, but yet so flexible on the move. And that's what we've seen with these matchmaker hogs. That structure and that way that front blade is laid into them is absolutely ideal. I, I totally love that orange gilt. Okay, let's jump with the, the girl with the two white socks. All right, Amy's favorite pig here, 4 5, lot 28. This is Rubble on a Real Deal. Real Deal is a purebred uh, Duroc boar, so she is half Duroc. If you're thinking about a foundation female, I truly believe this is a gilt that needs to be on your short list. Of all the gilts in this pen, she is the greenest, okay? And you can see that in her body condition, but that will come. I think when you have half purebred influence we know that she is going to have the bone the width the structure it's just going to take a little bit longer to get there and i say that and she still has a big top with a groove down it and a stout hip okay I'll get over. I'll so, just pull up here. incredibly high quality pin um you see we have the calico gilt um that is lot 31 the blue gilt there is lot 20, uh, is that right? Lot 27. 
We have the 13-6. 13-6 is lot 32. 13, and then we have lot 34 all right there. Um, and just an impressive set. Okay, we are now at pin five, checking out some more crossbred gilts. All right, again, we, we are very excited with these crossbred gilts uh, that we have. Let's start with right here. We have 10-5. I wanna take a second. We're not gonna talk long about all of them. This girl, lot 30, heater endowment. I think this one has every bit that it takes to get the job done. She is extended in her frame size, so you know that hind leg is gonna stay stable. You know she's gonna stay fresh. You can push her to the heavy weights, tank this one out. She has the look, she has the mass, she has the density, she has the forearm. She is a total package, complete. This gilt, I promise, is going to be a fun one to have. She still has plenty of green um, immaturity to her that you can run all summer long. That is lot 30. Take note, let's, heater, heater. Let's go with the black uh, sock gilt. Okay, that is 6-5. Okay. This one is a lot 29, smooth talker, party up north. This one in my mind, just shapely, absolutely shapely and expressive, long body. Another one, very green. If you just like to take them home, put them on a full feeder, let them do their thing and take out. I think this one is absolutely right. If your show has a market guilt show, you could probably run her either, either way. So the big blue guilt. Okay, hey, this is th uh, three dash seven. She is lot 26. This is a booty tickle battlefield. We saw her litter mate sister in the pin before. And whew, I mean, just honestly, I, we're in this trend of extension and frame size where we can take them and run them hard. I think this is a guilt you could run all the way into an August fair. Um, and still be fresh and still be youthful, but yet what a monster killer chest floor, wide toes shape at the ground, builds up to a bold forearm, just that extra length and extension. That's one that you can run for the long haul and still be fresh. Lisa stride on that one too. Incredible. That one here feels a track. Absolutely. Okay, we'll go with the one little gilt. Okay, one dash nine. This is a player player endowment. We're gonna see a brother of hers later that we need to take a deeper look at. Uh, I, I wanna just say that this guilt, re I know she's maybe not doing it now, but when you step up here, she just kind of demands a different amount of attention. She is just that bold, thick skull, but yet you get on top of her and she opens up at her blade and is really fresh and expressive, but I love that hip and hind leg. That chunky, stout hind leg, I think, Man, you get her out in the ring and she sets that down with that just great flexibility in her hawk and so much bone. Uh, she is an awfully, awfully fun one. Okay. 13-9. Nine. Nine. She is lot 35. This is a litter mate to the 13 litters that we saw in the pen before. She's exchange rate reaching high. Okay, I'm gonna compare it to her litter mates. She is green today. She's the smaller gilt, but I wanna tell you something. The pieces are there. Look, when she gets her head up, she might be the sleeper of the sisters. She's one that you can take and slow grow and put all those massive pieces together. Just no bad angle on her. No bad angle. That's a good gilt, just good hold. Okay. All right. 19 litter gilt. 19, eight. This is lot 36. Exchange rate outlaw. Remember, outlaw is the purebred Hampshire boar. I think this is a sleeper of the sale. I think this gill is a sleeper of the sale. She is one that maybe doesn't grab your attention because she just doesn't wow you in any one area. But what area is she bad? Lindsay, I'm gonna tell you something. Mm -hmm. The old man outlaw is right there. Absolutely. Has there been a boar one? Any more shows than that old man? It's no. not, not possible. And, and the reality is, is his pigs are very green. They are. And they don't have enough hip when they're little. And that's exactly what we see. But that front end and chest floor, people pay a ton of money for that. And as green condition as she is, and how wide she is at her blade, that's gonna come. 
I, I truly feel that this is a very just fresh, youthful, easy decision. Yes. Click yes. Lindsay, I'm going to say something on this. I want everybody to listen up. If Lindsay was 15 years younger, this is the guilt that I would pick for her. <laughs> when she was in 4-H 15 years ago, this is the guilt that you would have drove. That's 100%. That's our type. That is 100% accurate. Okay, I think we've got them all okay. here. Okay. And then 10. Bring them up. We can tee off right here. All right. Just I'm gonna... to bring them back around. You can take a good look at the pen. We talked them. So, it's a great pen of females. Absolutely. Okay, we are now at pin number six, checking out our first group of crossbred barrows. Kind of like we said with the gilts, we think we have a lot of options in here, a lot of quality options. The black-headed barrow right here is 19-4, that's lot 70, exchange rate outlaw mile high. Uh, so you got a purebred Hampshire back on mile high, what I would consider some of our most elite crossbred genetics all tied together into this little cool cocky guy. Uh, definitely a great front end, back shape, hip shape. He's what I would consider notch more moderate, a little shorter sided. So we know that guy's going to tank out and have all the power and mass. Just kind of a really cool barrow with a phenomenal pedigree. Okay, 25 barrow. Okay, this is 25-2. This is the last barrow, uh, or last hog in our sale lot, 72. He is a player player. Um, and, and I think he'll play. I mean, watch him prance, guys. Watch him prance. With bone. I'm going to try with, slow him down. With, so. with so much bone. I, I love the way his hind leg comes out of such a massive hip. It, and quite honestly, if you study him through his four ribs, this guy still has places to go. I mean, he, he's going to just get better and better as he matures and stretches out. I, I think this guy's awfully unique. Real cocky little fella there. This is his brother right here. And that is... Which one? You're on his brother. No, 14. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, the speckled one is brother. This is 14 1. This is lot 69. He is a bare necessity Excalibur. Uh, he, he can be timid in this pen, but just let's study him for just a second if, if he'll go. He has all the pieces. He has the wide toe spread, the forearm, the blade. He has the hind leg set. He gets out and he prances and he goes and he sets his hawk right. He's like a, a baby deer. You don't want to scare him, but when he gets out and cruises, he's beautiful. Okay. He's cool. He's not going to give us what we want. Yeah, that's why I said but he's timid, but he just needs somebody who'll give him some TLC. And uh, I think he has the right pieces. Don't don't sit on him. I, I was going to say, I, I want to make sure we don't under talk as, this yeah. guy because that one's big back, square hip. Monster legged, Lindsay. Absolutely monster legged. He he just needs some somebody to get him revved up because he's some cocky friends in this pen. I think he's awfully, awfully good. Okay. Uh, just a second. Let me see if I can't pull. This is three dash one. Yep. That's you're trying to pull. So the belted barrow that Dad's trying to pull is three dash one. That is a booty tickle battlefield. Um, lot sixty one. I. I got a couple stars by this barrow, and I wish that I'm he could have come out. I'm going to drive him that is if fine. I can. In my mind, I think he is so stylish and so fresh, and you're not actually getting to see that right here. If you see his front end, when that head actually comes up, how clean he is through that jawline and how tall he is at his shoulder, but then what a forearm and blade that he actually lays in. He's so His top shape is what I like the most because there's a groove laying down there, and you can see the depth of loin that he's offering, but yet he's still really fresh in that body condition. So I think you can push him pretty hard to be a heavyweight barrow. I, I really like that guy. He he does deserve a star, even though he's not giving it to us today. Okay, let's go calico time here. Okay, this is eleven dash five matchmaker Horton. Structurally, watch him go. His hind leg sets right into that hawk so perfectly inside of his body wall and he kind of has a little command about him he's super wide chested wide back stout hip and plus no doubt we know the orange collar gets you just a little extra look um, he's just neat that little calico guy okay so uh let's do a little blue speckle here okay that is um 25-1 
Uh, again, litter mate uh, to the bear we saw earlier. He's a player player, lot 71. Uh, compared to his brother, he's a little more moderate, uh, a little chunkier, but oh my. He ha I mean, what a top. What a top. What a hip. What a bone work. He looks like a little player player, but in a blue package. He sure does. Okay, I think that rounds out this pin right here. Do we get 11 dash? Yes, that was the orange one. Okay, yep. yep. We got all of this here. So here's all the crossbred beers that were in pin number six. Okay, we're back looking at some crossbreds in pin number seven. Look at all those guys just lined up there. Okay, yep, we have quite a few hogs in this pen. We do. It's a what trailer we load. Talk them while they're up here a little, sis. Okay. Because this is 7 1. I can't catch the. Okay, that's 7 3. Yep. And he is lot 64. We have three 7 litters in here. They are smooth talker Horton. And quite honestly, I think you can see the Horton and the smooth talker in both of them. Uh, the three little three litter or dash three, he's the greener one of all of them. Quite honestly, he might be the best one at the end, uh, just because I think you can take him slow and those hind legs will stay underneath them. You can, you can push him as hard as you need to, but he is so fresh and great fronted, but yet still wide and square at the ground. That's seven dash three. Let me see if I can get a, just a walk out of him, just a mm -hmm. little. Uh, he's not going to give it to me. Let's go uh, right here. This is be the six little bear. Okay, this is six dash two. I do think this is a bear to tie in to. He is lot 63, smooth talker, party up north. Uh, uh, man, I think, again, he's the type that we like to feed. He's a little skinnier and greener today, but his profile look, quite honestly, is incredible. How level he is from his blade to hip it is tremendous, and what a great hock and hind leg. And, and honestly, if we can get a chest shot maybe of him, there's still a chest in this guy, and skull with, I, I don't think we have to worry about this guy tanking out. He's gonna be a sleeper, six dash two. I think you need to talk about his bone as well. Okay, here we go. Let's catch up. Okay. Let's see if we can catch the blue here, seven okay. litter. This is the seven dash six. Again, that smooth talker Horton. The blue pig is lot 66. Um, I, I think this guy, when you get right behind him and you see just his fresh little hip, you get in front of him and you see his square chest floor. I know he maybe doesn't tie in as well right now, but he will. I think as this guy grows and matures and stretches, he's definitely have all the right pieces, plus the bone work and that tremendous hind leg. Okay, let me see if I can pull, pull another one out here. Okay, let me see if I can pull this five litter, or, yep, five dash one. Okay, five dash one, put a star by him, take our word for it. Uh, he is a matchmaker ego, that would be a cob uh, sow we bought a while ago, lot 62. This is another bear. I think you just watch him get out and go. He's a little more moderate, and I think you can jackpot him a little earlier, and he'll come out with that wide chest, that cocky head. But he, a lot of times when we correlate moderate, we just think they're thick and stout, and they don't have a look to them. But he has a notch extra extension through that head and neck that's really neat. Um, I it, gotta it, call him somewhat green yet, don't you? Yeah, and I think so. Uh, he's maybe, I guess I shouldn't even use the word moderate, maybe just a notch shorter back compared to some of the others. But this guy deserves a star, he deserves a second look. 5-2, he's, or excuse me, 5-1, lot uh, 62. That's a good barrel. 1-1. All right. 1-1, crossbred barrel. Player, player, endowment, lot 60. If you put one star by the five litter, put two stars by the one barrel. I, I don't even want to talk about him and ruin him. I don't know what there is to talk about on this one, sis. Mm -hmm. uh, we just call this one here. That's good hope. Uh, a good hope. Uh, yeah, I don't. One that can run at any level. He runs uphill. Yeah, I don't want to jinx him. Good hog looking to star him. We need, uh, did we get 7-4? Right here Okay, there we go. All right, so you can see compared to his brothers, he, he has more muscle today. Uh, he is lot 65. Again, that's smooth talker Horton. Uh, but golly, 
that guy, what a hip in him. And a massive back, and he drops down to a deep rib. Uh, we gotta get his head cleaned up, uh, but when we do, I think you'll see how pretty and cool and cocky he has a ditch down his back. If you like muscle and base width and you like the sound and stout skull, yeah. uh, if, if you're worried about not feeding Paline or you don't want to feed Paline this year, hello. That, that guy right there is going, there, there he is. It's going to get it. So, okay, we've got 6-2, right? We, we've done 6-2. We need the 7-3. 13-4. 13, our little 13-4. Yep. Yep. Right that is go. the exchange rate Whoa. reaching high. Remember, we had quite a few 13-liter gilts that you saw earlier. Um, and we know the exchange rate hogs work. We know they do. They stay sound. They're bold rib. They're big backed. They're cocky in the show ring. And I think this guy fills every aspect of it. Structurally, uh, just a beautiful dream. Just excellent. Class winner, Indiana State Fair, class 38 crossbred. Yeah. Look exactly Winning like this. Side by exchange rate that came right out of this barn. In fact, he was in his pen. And he looks exactly like this. Isn't that? I mean, it's uncanny. We know this works. What lot number? He is 68. 13-4. Okay. Love him. Okay. I think we've talked about all of them. Just a great group of barrows. Let's see. Can I get them all? Here because there's so many in this pen here. Let's let them kind of crank back up here and kind of get excited about these guys right here. Well, a little truckload. You can so, see the I'm second barrel over one from the end one is 1-1. Lot number? 60. Okay. The big exchange rate is lot 68. Lot 68. Uh, lot 65. Lot 65. The blue barrel. He is lot 66. And 6-2. 63. Right here. Okay. Uh, 7-3 barrel right there. 64, Ooh. and then 5-1 on the end there is Big lot hip. 62. Uh, you called him a single star. Uh, let's go Lisa, you star, a double and a star. star and a half. Star All right. and a half. <laughs> He's okay, pretty cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, we are now in pin number 8, checking out a litter of Yorkshires. All six of these guys are litter mates, 31 litters. Their pedigree is fortified back on crowd control. Um, we have two gilts and four barrows. So what we'll do is we'll just go through these guys kind of one at a time. Okay, See which Amy, one? Yeah, I'll start up. here with the 31-5 uh, barrow. Big, thick, stout, big legged as they all are. Uh, but this guy's got a massive top in him, massive hip. This is 31-5. Dash five, so right here. 31 dash five, big old stout barrow. Okay, so we're gonna pick up 31 dash four, a little taller, shoulder, greener barrow here, eh? Yep. And uh, love the squareness of top, freshness of look, really clean throated, really up on his pastures, not quite as much muscle as we think we've seen, but that definitely will come. Love the profile and feet and legs on, on that guy there. So let me get out uh, uh, the two barrow here. Uh, kind of a combination of the two that we just had really hits the ground square coming and going. Big back and big old square hip laid into him. Uh, I, I want to show the three bar right there beside him. He's right there. So so we just kind of jump through this with the litter mates. Uh, this guy, if I can get that hip, can you catch that hip? Maybe? I can, yeah. yeah. That one is so impressive with his hip and hind leg. And, I want everybody to see his feet and legs as this one goes. His range of motion, big time, big time uh, Yorkshire Barra uh, right there. So, I uh, don't want to miss. Jump to the two gilts now. Okay, did I catch all the barras? You caught all the bears, yep. Caught all the barras, okay. So, we'll start right here with the seven litter gilt. This is 31 7. 31 7. Big, robust, big center body. Huge, huge engine in this one. Uh, get this one pulled. There we go. Come here, sweetie. If I can pull that one toward you, you can see that chest. Yep, there she's uh, coming right at me. Really, really nice. Uh, nice thing here. The legs on this one is way good. Big back, square hip. So, let me get her sister here. Get her pulled up right here. Here we go. 
right here, 31-8. Come on, sweetie. I may just have to drive her. 31-8. She's the one that's big topped and big hipped and really square made at the ground. Good design. Really good center body to her as well. She's I'm not one to this cooperate one here. She's very not, well with She's her. not going to work with this here, Amy. But uh, I'm going to tell you, this is one of the better Yorkshire gilts that we've put together. Uh, Link the stride. Lindsay just joined us. How do you see this one, Lindsay? Oh, well, I think you guys have already described her well. She's lot 12, and if we haven't mentioned that, there she goes. And that, when that head comes up, I think you guys can see just how well she ties together from her blade into a pliable center rib to a square hip and a stout hind leg. Um, just one I think you could even show all summer and then take and be a brute sow at home. Yep. So these are 31 litters. Um, all, just a reminder, their pedigree is fortifying crowd control. Um, and these guys' mom just always consistently does a really good job for us. So, 31 litter Yorkshires. We're offering six out of this litter. Eight. There we go. Oh, there she goes. There's the eight. Now, yeah, let's start. That's seven. Gotta hit. So, okay, that's good. Okay, everybody. We are now in pin number nine, checking out our first group of Hampshire Barrows. So, Dan. You just want to start with the black one right there, or which one you want to start with? Any of them. Okay, let's start with this guy right here. Right here. Okay. 17 little barrel. So this is lot 43, 17-1. He's a one-of-a-kind prime time. Um, we think his off-belt kind of sets him apart, plus just what a horse. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Besides, this guy is an absolute monster truck with a big old chest floor in him, a massive back, stout ribs, stout hip, just a truck. Okay, okay. Let's jump over kind here. Of, yep, kind of a little cocky uh, barrow that we have coming through there. That is lot uh, 42, 16-5. That is a shock the world back on the game. Um, we have a littermate brother to him in the next pin that you'll see, and I think these two are quite a pair. This guy is just cocky and cool and fresh and shapely and a phenomenal hind leg. Uh, just a really neat uh, little 16 litter barrel right there. Okay, this is lot 38, 8-3, world class, here I am. Now this guy offers the most extension. He's the tallest shoulder, the cleanest through that front end. A little rib longer than maybe some of the other bears that we just previewed before. I think you can take him to a heavier weight, push him a little harder and, and fill him out. And man, keep that fresh back shape, that stout hip. He's still wide skulled. That guy's kind of cool. Okay. You wanna get the crinkle okay. ear? Okay, this is lot 37. Um, to, uh, excuse me, 2-1, Stomping Grounds Outlaw. Yep, this is our first Stomping Grounds litter. I just want to take a second and just study the feet and leg and structure of this guy. I, I think he looks exactly like we expected this litter to be. We didn't expect them to be the big, bulky, chunky ones little. We expected them to be structurally correct and extended, and what a front end he has. I know he kind of has a crinkle ear, but notice that chiselness through that jawline and the freak neck as it ties high into his shoulder. We just need to get him trained where that head will crank up, but that guy's gonna be fresh. I think you can push him pretty hard and he'll hold together. I think his hip and hind leg is extremely good as well. So, okay. We are missing, I believe, 18-1, 18. 18 and that is lot 44, one of a kind, prime time. This guy's just, I mean, chunk in a good way. That center rib and that, just the way that his uh, back shape comes into a stout hip and lower stifle and big bone work and wide at his hock. That guy, in my mind, is just an easy feed, good, good, high quality barrel. Look at the chest of this cat too. He just kind of has it. He just kinda. has it. Okay. That is the Hampshire Bureaus and yep. pin number nine. Okay, as we're rounding the um, this barn up, we are at pin 10 checking out some Hampshire barrows. Guys, I want to just take a second to make a bold statement. 
that this is the point. These are the barrels. If you are wanting to roll and play at a high level, even the Yorkshires down there are pumped up about them. Um, but if you are wanting to roll and play at a high level and you want a jackpot and you want to go to the exposition and Louisville and still make it away at state or at county fairs, maybe even hold them back for state fair, this is the look in pin. Okay, the bear that dad is tied into, that is 16 3. That is Shock the World, the game. That is 40 1. I want to tell you something. This guy back in the grower in the nursery, or in the nursery, this barrow had me ribbed. I, I mean, I was ready to start calling everybody under the sun because this guy, he's just so different. We had a Shock the World barrow uh, that was running last summer that was the reserve at Expo and reserve at Louisville. And I feel like this guy can follow in his footsteps with that stout skull, that massive back, that wide hip, but yet that hop stays inside of his body wall, his bone density, just the mass and power that he has all the way through. He is really, really neat. The 9-1, he will be lot 39. This is a world-class prime time, a pedigree that works. We know it, we've seen it. He is at this pin, the most immature in his development so far, but he is a notch rib longer. Whoa, what a hind leg. Get him going, what a hind leg. Judging kids, that is the ideal hip and hind leg that he has. Does he have the muscle in the hip that he needs today? No, but who's his daddy? World class. What is world class known for doing? Making power hogs that are mobile and walk and win. Nine dash one, that's a good deal. 12-3 is who we're missing back there. High expectations, prime time. And we saw a littermate sister to him earlier today, and I want to just kind of compare the two because they're almost darn near identical. I, I think whenever you get a front end that looks like his, that's taller shouldered, chisel geek neck, uh, and then fresh in his overall type, it is so difficult to get a thick chest floor in him that squares the knee, and I think he does it. Uh, he is a long body. He is great, and what I love about this pin as a total is their feet and legs work. I think this guy's going to stay sound. You can push him into a heavy weight. He comes out of the gate looking like that. A very fun set of barrows. Pay attention to pin 10. These are good hauls. Hey, everybody. We are now over in what we're calling pin G1. Checking out the Tamworth Barrows. Yep, and the one on the line right here is 1 2. These Tamworth Barrows um, are very, kind of have a great pedigree. They are uh, Fury back on Zephyr, which their mother uh, was the champion overall guilt. Dad um, now has the dash 4, 1 4 pot. Sorry, okay, no, with their mother, this whole one litter, uh, their mother was the champion overall. Uh, he'll champion Tamworth and champion overall uh, at the Ohio State Fair session one. Um, and then where, where was she, she at? She was the reserve grand guilt at uh, the CPS, CPS type conference. Yes. Only yep. to get Not the junior show. The junior show. The junior show. Not the type conference. Yeah. Yep. And she's also a litter mate to Zohan and Zoolander. Zohan and Zoolander. That's yeah. right. So the, these, why, we ha why we're excited about these is uh, this one right here is 1-4 yeah. that dad has online he is the the young i guess the the smallest one the greenest one right now quite honestly he could potentially be the best one at the end um his hind leg is beautiful his extension up front is attractive he's just a neat cute little little bear that we have there he is so 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 good this is 1-1 <clears throat> 1-1 one is the one we are revved i mean we are revved about if you if you are just interested in a county fair barrow, he's not for you. <laughs> we we think this guy can roll at a national level. We think he can go in jackpot uh, and be a force to reckon with. And we think that he's even green enough to run in um, to state fairs. So. Yeah, and, and we want to say this. I want to clarify. We don't want to discourage nobody going to county fair. No. But he's one that's has the opportunity to, be to win bigger. that national show yes. state fair. Uh, to be to be bigger than a county. He can fair. go. In fact, yes. all three of these one letters have the opportunity of running the gamut.
from front to rear. So which yeah, one are we missing here, girls? The two, one the dash, dash two. Dash two, right I, here. Yeah, I feel like dash two is just a little greener version of dash one. Um, in my mind, what we like about this one litter is they're just so different. They're so stylish. They're, they're just like their mother. End. Yeah, they have this chiseled neck and this geek front end that's so cool and so unique that's very hard to get. But yet, what I like is when you study their blade width, they're wide at their blades. And even though they're green in their body condition, which is where they need to be now, they have the muscle shape and they're so square at the ground. Let's, let's jump to the 10 litter. Okay. Okay. They switched out one. Yep. yep. The 10 litter, he is a, uh, what is he? I lost him. He'd be a Zoolander. He's a, he's a he's Zoolander. A, That's he's right. a Zoolander. Yep. He's a Zoolander. He's the one that I think looks exactly like Zoolander. He has an extra length of body, but he, I mean, he drops a little more rib maybe than the one litter right now, but he's a big back, big hipped barrow that in my mind is just going to have the bulk and the stoutness, uh, but yet like Zoolander, be a little extra extended through that center body. Yep. And so his daddy is a litter mate to the other one's mom. Yes. Correct. So, so here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to pull him up here. He's a you, Zoolander record breaker. You can't flip that one around there, sis, could you just like down so we can get a get a view of these come here buddy he's not interested in you dad okay that's all well, right that's what okay i want to say guys <coughs> you know we've won a lot <coughs> excuse me with the tams let's just call it the way it is these are the best by leaps and bounds uh we feel we're gonna put our name on these guys so this is 1-2, 1-4, 1-1, and the 10 litter Farah. <coughs> These guys are gonna run anywhere. I'll put them up against any Tams in the nation. Right there. Perfect. Thank okay. you guys. Okay, everybody, we are now in pin G2 with the Hereford Gilts. Yep, these are all litter mates. They are Taco Supreme back on rapid fire. Um, Taco Supreme obviously is a son of Taco Truck. Taco Truck's been gone a year, still winning, and we think Taco Supreme is going to step right in and fill his daddy's shoes big time. And we think that specifically uh, from looking at these gilts right here. Um, if we just want to go down the line, um, the yep, we'll start with the Dash Six gilt. Nine Dash Six. Dad has on it. Uh, hold on. Nine Six is right there. Oh, nine, I'm six. sorry. Nine it's Six, right. right there. 9.6 is the one that is just, she's the most moderate of them all, but she is chunky. Her rib shape is exceptional. Her blade and forearm, her bone, she's stout skulled. She's just a massive fit gilt. She's one that, you know, you can feed a little slow, so she uh, keeps that front end pretty, but really thick, stout, massive gilt. We'll tie on to the uh, Dash 7 gilt. I think those two are the most different in their kind. This gill, obviously, is more extended. She is way pretty fronted. If we can get a side profile that, I think that is going to set her apart. It is so hard to keep these Herford gilts, which is such an attractive front end. And she is greener. She's not as thick as her litter mate. But my goodness, she has an incredible look to her. And then the Dash 5 gilt right here. We want to take a second and study her. I just think she's built right. I just think that she has all the right pieces. We're talking about the one here uh, on the left. And so, yeah, right there. And she has everything, bone, skeleton, square, but yet is still green where she is gonna take off and her best days will be this spring, this summer. And we'll so, just kind of move these around because you can see the feet and legs are ideal on these. And Lindsay, I agree with the comment that you made. Taco Truckway just won again, Grand Board, Reserve Grand Guild, Premier Sire to, in Belton, Texas. And we believe Taco Supreme, who was the Reserve Grand Board at the Expo, is going to take right off where he left off, taking nothing away from our great Souther that we've got. I think here's three females here 
definitely will. Uh, well, and what I like about this part. litter is we have the genetic potential all here, but they each are a little different in their type and kind. If you like them taller and prettier, then you want to go after the dash seven. If you want them a little smaller and, and stouter, you want to go after the dash six. If you kind of want the combination gilt who's great in terms of feet and legs, then you want to go after the dash five. Dash five, dash six, dash seven. Yep. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, everybody. We are now at pen G3, and we are with the Berkshires. We have three barrows and one gilt. Yeah, let's just start with the gilt. Uh, we have two different litters in here. The gilt, her ear notch is 6-3. She is a strong arm. Speak loud. You can see her there on the left side of your screen. I think this girl is fancy. See, <laughs> I think that she has that green body shape uh, for this stage that's ideal so you can kind of push her to a heavier weight, but yet she's still thick skulled and wide chested that you can see she's going to have all of that uh, power and mass as, as she goes forward. And so obviously a really beautiful square hip, her tail head sets up high, her hind leg is stable. And so we really like that 6-3 guilt. She's Glen immature today. Lindsay, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, uh, we've had some people that kind of know what they're doing coming through. Uh, we may not be known as the Berkshire breeder to go to, but uh, we may after this one. Yeah. Uh, this one here is so youthful, I think, in her look. I think she is so uh, feminine in her makeup, and yet she's so good in her feet and legs. I mean, this one here, I mean... That one has a different look than most Burks. Absolutely. Okay. Can Let's we see. find her brother so we can stay yes. on the same litter? Yes. Right there, he's coming right in. Yep, he's right here. Right here with the blaze face yep. there. Right here. Um, his ear notch is 6 2. Obviously, he is a little bulkier up high than his sister, but yet he's still the same amount of bone work, the same stable hind leg, that center rib. <clears throat> and even though he is a little stouter skull, he is still clean in that front jaw line. Um, it, he's just, in my mind, a fleshy bear who's going to be an easy feeder. You're not going to have to push him too hard. He's just going to naturally kind of get the job done. So that's right there. That is Definitely the easy feeder. Mm -hmm. Definitely easy feeder. Okay. We can jump over to the Strut sired pigs. Uh, and Strut was the champion Berkshire Boar uh, at the CPS Summer Type Conference last year in 2019. 3-2. Woohoo! 3 2. I, I wrote swag. This guy has swag. And I, I, I just, I don't know. This guy kind of gets me wound up a little bit because he is so cocky and energetic and wild. And man, his bone work and his front end and just the natural shape. A lot of times on Berkshire's, how many times do we get to say he's shapely? you know, at this stage. They're massive, but are they shapely? And I think the dash two, three dash two, he's just swag. And you know what he's got, girls? He's got something you can't feed. He's got a personality. Yeah. He's heads up, he's alert, he's so athletic. Um, he's got crossbred shape. He does. Let's just call it the way of this. I mean. Well, yeah, and the way that he comes out of his hip and drops into a really flexible hind leg and his top sits down so wide and square, but it's inside his body wall. Here's the reaper. This is his brother. His brother at this point is a little thicker and a little further along than he is, but his bone work is incredible. His, his I mean, my, my first notes on him are rib, skull, bone, chest, massive, thick, stout. This guy has it. That is specifically what I wrote on my paper, and I think that is a 100% accurate description uh, of the strut pitch. Here so. they all four are, guys. What a beautiful set of Berkshire bears and gilt. So we have, going down the line, left to right, 6-2. Then we have 3-2. Then we have the gilt, who is 6-3. And then down here we have 3-3. Three three. Okay, thank you. Perfect, thank you. Okay, we're now at pin G4, checking out the Chesters in this sale. Yep. Three, three litter mates. Three litter mates. They are God's plan back on Stonehenge. Uh, and let's, I'll, I'll try to get the lot numbers to you. But my opening statement is away with fat necked Chesters. We don't have to have chunky necked Chesters anymore. 
So uh, if we could get a side profile, let's yeah, we could get. Let's see, which one are you starting with? Well, I got the barrel right here, sweetheart. Okay. Well, the barrel. I think this guy is smoking good. I know he's a little longer hair today, but oh my goodness, his lot is 54. He is 4-1. Again, God's plan, Stonehenge. I think this guy is unbelievably good. He is so genuine at the ground. Study if this is a great angle from hock to ground, hock to hock, and then build up from there how square he is down his back shape and how great he is in his forearm and blade. And that front end is just, I mean, extended and neat. And he takes a long stride, but he's still immature in his body uh, condition where I think you can push this guy to a heavy weight and he, he will be a player because he has that extra extension through the side. His tail head's jacked up. His hind leg is right. Uh, the, he has a crinkle ear, guys. Oh, well, who cares? I like him. So what do you really think of this one, sis? <laughs> you need to read my write-up. need to read the write-up. <laughs> okay, here's what we're saying, guys. Is <clears throat> this God's plan deal, it's it's for reach. It, it, there's no doubt uh, this second litter out of him, or December's, was amazing. And uh, we come right in here again. So we'll jump in with the, with the six litter guilt, sis, right here in the yep, middle. Yep. The six litter guilt, um, if any of them It's are, a dash six guilt. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, sorry. Four, four dash, dash six. six. Dash sorry. six. I'm I'm sorry. Four dash six, which is lot 15. She, of, of the litter mates, is probably the most moderate and the stoutest today. She opens up in a big blade and forearm, drops into a stout rib. She's a little deeper flanked than her sister is today. Uh, but you can tell she's stouter skulled, stouter back. But again, I want to study just that hip and hind leg and how she plants inside of her body wall. And even though she is wider, she is square and genuine at her knee at the ground. I think that is a guilt that you can take and know will mass up very easily be an easy feeder. Her sister. her sister is 4-5. She is lot 14. Totally different. She's very, very green today. She maybe doesn't have that rib shape that her sister has, but study that skull width. Study the blade and the bone work. It'll come. She's taller shouldered, longer body, longer hip. I think this is a guilt. You take home. You put on full feed and talk to me in May. And then talk to me in June, and we'll talk about your success. Her front end is just wickedly cool. Her tail head, her hop, every piece of her is absolutely built right. Study her blade work and how wide she is there at her shoulder and how wide she is at her upper hip. That center rib's going to take out. That's an awfully good gill. Okay, let's summarize. you got the barrow over on your right. Yep. We have the barrow is lot 54. We have lot 14 in, in the middle. And we have lot 15 to the far left. Okay, now we're in pin G5 with the Hereford. Okay, this is a litter mate to the gilts that you saw earlier. Um, these are taco truck uh, babies, or sorry, taco supreme babies back on rapid fire. I, I, I love this guy. I don't think there's too much that I can say that you're going to convince me that this guy's not going to play and run this summer. Um, again, I, I don't know if we could see that chest floor. Look at that chest floor. <laughs> and just that cocky front end, how good he is in his blade. He needs to go home and somebody train him to run with that head cranked up. I think that blade and forearm and that long stride up front and that massive chest coming straight out the gate, it is going to be fun for you this summer. And I'm gonna tell you, he collars so beautiful. I mean, this guy's got that special Hereford look, and uh, I mean, uh, this one here is gonna be a player, so Absolutely. thank you. Okay, we're at pin G6, checking out the Duroc Barrow. This is 2-1, which will be lot 45. He's a red bone Southern Knight, and I honestly think he fits his pedigree to a T. This is going to be a big bladed, massive bone, wide chested, stout skull, big back, big ribbed, big hipped bear. That's just going to be an easy feat. 
okay? This is a bear. You don't want to take him home and put him on a full feeder. He, you know, just hand feed him, slow grow him, and this guy will have the mass, the power, have all the pieces, uh, and you can sit back and have quite a bit of fun. So if you, if you are a power hog, Duroc Barrow lover, this is the guy for you. Again, he is lot 45. I just want to add to that, sis, that this is a guy you can take out early. Absolutely. on the circuit and just make it work Absolutely. And, and like you said slow grow this cat here because you're not going to find them bigger bladed bigger bones stouter skull bigger back than this guy right here and really a tremendous amount of hip and hind leg bone hey thanks for going through around the barn with us today uh, we hope you saw some things that you are excited about if you have even more questions feel free to give any of us a call um, you can just find our individual numbers on the website or just call the office at 765-789-8349 and we'd be glad to help you out shoot us a text message um, and our sale just as a reminder is this Tuesday March the 10th on showpig.com so we appreciate you taking a chance uh, and looking and stopping by and if you need anything give us a holler Thank you for checking